today I want to have a few words about the Welsh Revival which took place mainly over the years 1904 to 1905. Some very extraordinary occurrences happened during this two year period and it's been well documented by the Western Mail newspaper and of course there are other sources too mainly in the National Library of Wales I've been asked to do some research on the Welsh Revival and it's been a fascinating journey for me with so much information and so many things to ponder upon if you told people today in the 21st century that these things were possible and had in fact happened more than a hundred years ago you'd probably be looked at with total astonishment amazement and disbelief but I can assure you that some of the things that I'm about to share with you did all happen as I am describing them and I've got to tell you that this is something that we need to try and replicate in today's society because as you all know the church is declining not only in the number of members but also in the number of people attending on a Sunday morning or afternoon of course in 1904 there were not the competing attractions of Sunday football matches or they would not be cinemas weren't open supermarkets hadn't been invented and very few shops were available to people and even transport was very limited I remember myself as a five-year-old child or younger going to Sunday school a Methodist Sunday school actually in the morning 11 o'clock coming back home for my lunch and then being told by my mother to have a two-hour siesta on my bed in my bedroom that afternoon I was not allowed to play nothing I could do but read I wasn't even allowed to play with my toys so times indeed have changed whether they've changed for the better that of course is up for your own personal beliefs and judgment all I would remind you is that if you read Genesis in the Bible that God created the world in seven days and on the seventh day the Sabbath he rested what was good enough for God should perhaps be good enough for us but there you are I don't suppose I'm necessarily going to be able to change people's minds suddenly like this but I think it's worth pointing out that in the time of 1904 when the Welsh Revival took place people did indeed make time for God not only on a Sunday but during the week as well now the Welsh Revival really began with an astonishing young man name of Evan Roberts and he was born on June the 8th 1878 at Ireland House near the banks of the River Lahore which I somewhere near Swansea his parents Hannah and Henry Roberts were staunch Christians and they were both pious members of the Moriah Calvinistic Methodist Church in Lahore they attended their chapel every Sunday and usually went to other events during the week as well it was, heaven, it was Evan's home environment that helped him to develop an awareness of God 
at a very early age. But when Evan was nearly 12 years old, his father had a serious accident down a coal mine where he was working, which meant that he was completely unable to work for the next three months. Evan had to leave school to assist his father when his father went back to work. Evan became what is known as the door boy. Evan's spiritual light shone within even the darkness of the mines. While working, he prayed and sang hymns. And during the breaks, while other miners played cards, Evan read his Bible. In fact, he took his Bible with him whilst he was underground and read it at every possible opportunity. And as a young teacher, as a young teenager, Evan began teaching in a Sunday school and eventually he served his church as a Sunday school attendant, a pianist and a song leader. Now his spiritual discipline increased and sometimes he prayed well into the night for hours and hours and hours. He worked down the mines until the year 1902, at which time he became an apprentice to his mother's brother, a blacksmith at Pont d'Ardoule. And he worked for the blacksmith for 15 months, but his heart wasn't really in his work because he desired very greatly to become a preacher. There was a minister called Reverend Seth Joshua, who was a forward movement minister in Cardiff at the beginning of the 1900s. And he had been praying for years that God would send an ordinary young man who worked in the coal mines or the fields to lead a revival in Wales. Now, early in 1904, at Newquay in Cardiganshire, Joseph Jenkins, who was a Methodist, was praying earnestly that change might come over the churches in the area. One Sunday morning in February, a young people's prayer meeting was being held at this church. Jenkins asked the young people to share with the others anything that happened to them in connection with their religion. A young girl named Florrie Evans rose to her feet and said, I love Jesus with all my heart. Immediately, the whole meeting seemed to catch fire. Young people found it easy to pray and to talk about their experiences. This fire spread to other places nearby, including Lynanich. On September 13th, 1904, Evan Roberts and his best friend Sidney Evans moved to Newcastle Emlyn to attend a grammar school which actively prepared young men to enter Trafika College where they intended to train for the ministry. But his preparation came sooner than Evan expected. For God began to reveal himself to Evan in a special and spectacular way. One night, he woke up and found himself in the presence of God, and his fellowship with God became so real that he said afterwards, I found myself with unspeakable awe and joy in the presence of the Almighty God. I was privileged to speak face to face with him as a man speaks face to face with a friend. This deep communication went on for four hours and then Evan fell asleep. He was very surprised to find that the same experience occurred the next night, again resulting in an extraordinary fellowship with God that again lasted for four hours. This continued every night for the next three months as God revealed himself in a dramatic fashion, preparing him for the great calling that lay ahead of him. Evan and some other students attended services conducted by the evangelist Seth Joshua. Evan heard Joshua 
pleading in prayer. Bend us, bend us, O Lord. These simple but powerful words cause heaven to vibrate from the very core, very core of his being. And he explained, I felt a living power pervading my bosom. It took my breath away and my legs trembled exceedingly. This living power became stronger and stronger as each one had prayed. I said I felt that it would tear me apart. I fell on my knees with my arms over the seat in front of me. My face was bathed in perspiration and the tears flowed in streams and I cried out, bend me, bend me. It was God's commanding love which bent me. What a wave of peace flooded into my bosom. That day, Evan had a very deep spiritual experience. This is how he described the feelings and emotions that followed. I felt ablaze with fire and a desire to go through the length and breadth of Wales to tell of the Saviour, the Lord my God. He saw himself leading a team throughout Wales, calling for salvation decisions and for people to surrender to the Holy Spirit. Prior to the conference, something seemed to be holding him back from knowing God's fullness of joy and eternal love and being able to accept and know that God had forgiven him for all his past sins. But after the conference, Evan felt overwhelmingly that he was now ready to follow his father God in everything he did and everything he said. He became totally obedient to the will of God. And when he returned to the Newcastle Emlyn Grammar School after the conference, Evan's mind was in utter confusion and turmoil. Evan explained the best he could to the minister of Newcastle Emlyn, the Reverend Evan Phillips, that the Holy Spirit was urging him to return to Laha to work with the young people of the Moriah Calvinistic Methodist Chapel. He followed the promptings of the Holy Spirit by catching the next train home. When Evan returned home to Laha, he was a much change from the person he was when he was last at home. He told his family about his new experiences and he infused about what God wanted him to do in his hometown. He arranged to speak the next weekend after being back home. His message had four distinct parts to it. First, Evan preached to the congregation that they should confess all their sins. Secondly, he implored them to stop any questionable activities. Thirdly, he told them to obey the Holy Spirit's promptings. And lastly, he asked them to make a public confession of their faith. And that was the weekend that the revival spark became truly ignited. Some 60 people responded to Evan's appeal during the first week. One newspaper reported that Evan was causing great surprise by his extraordinary orations at the Moriah Chapel, that place of worship having been absolutely besieged by dense crowds of people unable to obtain admission. Then Evan, his brother, his brother Dan and three singing sisters took the Holy Spirit message to many towns throughout Wales. And at each new town, Evan went to the mines. And as the miners emerged into the daylight from underground, he gave each one a personal invitation to attend his meetings. And in every village and town he visited, and in which he preached, there were the same results. Large crowds gathered, people confessed and repented of their sins, and their personal behaviour changed. The revival meetings were extraordinary. Some people would be crying for joy, others crying for sorrow over their sins. Several people would be, would be praying all at the same time for their friends, their parents or their children. And for two years, 
between November 1904 and 1906, God anointed Evan Roberts to release a powerful movement of the Holy Spirit. The result of this was more than 100,000 Christians. The number is absolutely mind-boggling. Think of it. 100,000 Christians and more were profoundly influenced by the spiritual life of Wales and the world and the preachings of Evan Roberts. Some would be singing, others telling people about the joy that they had experienced. The churches and chapels were filled to capacity and there were crowds and crowds of people on the roads outside the churches. Yet there was no disorder in the meetings. The meetings went on until 2, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning so that men coming off the night shift in the collieries met the people coming out of the meetings. The presence of the Holy Spirit did not depend just on Evan Roberts though. The whole Spirit, Holy Spirit descended even in places which Evan did not visit. The revival spread like wildfire from place to place all over the country, especially where people have been praying that such a thing would take place. Thousands of people were saved. Public houses became almost empty. Men and women who used to waste their money getting drunk were now saving it and giving it to the church instead. And they were using their money to buy clothes and food for the families. Stealing and other offences became less and less. Often a magistrate came to court and found that there were no cases for him to try. Men who blasphemed learned to talk purely. The miners actually put in a better day's work, but the poor pit ponies could not understand what had happened to the miners because the miners were speaking to them more kindly. The donkeys and ponies were so used to being sworn at that they became disobedient. People who had been careless about paying their bills or paying back money they owed now gave back all that they had borrowed. People who had quarrelled forgave each other and were reconciled. A newspaper reporter went to visit a police station. What the policeman did now that there was so little crime, he asked. And he was told, we used to serve two purposes, dealing with crime and controlling the crowds. Now that a revival has come, there is absolutely no crime, or very little. So we go where the crowds are, to the churches. We have several good singing voices amongst our policemen. So we have formed three quartets and sing at the meetings whenever we get given the chance. One of the valley police courts had been averaging 700 cases per week six months before the revival. After the revival was going full force, the average number of cases per week was reduced to two. Can you believe it? Only two. Society was changed dramatically and Wales had become a God-fearing nation. The revival storm that hit the hills and valleys of Wales in the autumn of 1904 became a hurricane that affected the whole of Wales. November 1904 witnessed the hand of God in the widely separated districts of Rose in North Wales and Loha in South Wales. They independently and simultaneously knew powerful convictions and wonderful conversions. Many, many people were saved and acknowledged Jesus as their saviour. The staggering success of the gospel could not be attributed to the instrumentality of just one man. This was not the wisdom of man, but the power of God and his Holy Spirit. Evan Roberts travelled around Wales, taking meeting after meeting after meeting, often accompanied by singers who had themselves been touched by the Holy Spirit. Evan 
was a spiritually sensitive man, sometimes receiving words of knowledge, information from spirit about a particular individual and their specific needs. He had a great gift of prophecy. Sometimes the Holy Spirit would show him specific instances of sins that needed to be repented of. At other times he would prophesy accurately of the number of people that would submit to Christ that particular night. One newspaper columnist wrote an article about Evan using the headline Thought Reader. Evan was totally modest at all times. He often refused to allow his picture to be taken, fearing that he would take the glory from his Lord. He would never announce where he would be speaking, as he had no wish to become the star of the revival. And at one meeting where he was speaking, he reminded the congregation of the promise of Christ that wherever two or three were gathered together, he would be there in their midst. When he asked the congregation if they believed that promise, they heartily responded, Amen! Amen! To which Evan replied, Then you don't, me, then you, then you don't need me. So he went and left the meeting. After he left, the people, suddenly aware of their Saviour in their midst, erupted into prayer and praise and began to worship their Father God. Society was greatly influenced by these renewed law-abiding individuals with a puritanical honesty, a positive work ethos and a personal life free of the many addictions of the time. They remained the spiritual stalwarts of churches and chapels for many years afterwards. For them, the revival of 1904 to 1905 was ongoing and seemed never ending. Exhausted from a formidable set schedule of meetings, Evan Roberts suffered from extreme overtiredness, which was perhaps understandable. He found refuge in the home of William and Jesse Penn Lewis in Leicestershire in the spring of 1906. By 1907, he had recovered his health and became a prayer intercessor, spending up to 18 hours a day in prayer. His close and constant communion with God gave him great authority when he was moved to speak or counsel. In 1924, he moved to Brighton and then to Worthing. In 1930, Evan Roberts returned to Wales and lived quietly in Cardiff. He worshipped at the Welsh Chapel there. He died on January the 29th, 1951, and he was buried in the family grave behind Maria Calvinistic Methodist Chapel. Though Wales was then a little known country on the Celtic fringe of Europe, when the 1904 revival began, within a short time, people were flocking to see and hear for themselves what God was doing and to share in his blessing. Newspaper reports of the revival spread the news of the awakening and visitors touched by the Spirit of God took the flame to their home countries. The revival spread as ripples of water on a pond to Europe first, then America and eventually throughout the whole world. Missionaries from Wales, inspired by the revival, went to Madagascar, India, China and Patagonia and promoted to confirm the work of the revival there. Colleges made a great contribution to the spread of the revival by providing the personnel for the overseas missions and by creating a spirit of prayer for the awakening. A revival, importantly, produced a worldwide movement in the Apostolic Church. It's such a marvellous thought, my dear friends. Think 
of the revival as I described it. This is only a brief description because there was much much more and if you look at the Western Daily newspaper for that period of 1904 to 105 you will find more than a thousand references to Evan Roberts and the revival. I strongly commend you to think about my words very carefully because today in our present society we lack something we lack morality we lack honesty integrity and many people have now become what we term backsliders that they used to go to Sunday school they used to attend church regularly but now they have been seduced by the lure of television, theatre, shopping in the supermarket, sport, particularly football on a Sunday, and they just forget that if you are faithful to God, then God will be faithful to you. And by asking and praying to Jesus, to our Father God, to the Holy Spirit, you will be able to ask for what you need. For God will never leave nor forsake you. He will always look after you. And just, he just really wants to hear from you. It's just like talking to a friend. When I pray in the morning when I wake up, I speak to him pretty well as I'm speaking to you now. You don't have to use high, high polluting words, so to speak. You don't have to use complicated phraseology. God knows your needs even before you voice them. But what is important that you share with him your inmost thoughts and desires and pray for what you need and not just what you need but what you, other people need not, not just your family or friends but pray for all those people who have been persecuted in various countries throughout the world there are many Christians that even today are dying daily for their faith we need to pray that the people who have been persecuted are given the innermost strength by God to endure all the atrocities being perpetrated against them upon a daily basis. Thank you, my friend, for listening. And if you have any thoughts about what I've said, if you want to join me in the revival for the year 2016, just watch the space for more will be revealed as time progresses. God bless you all. Amen.